So it's definitely draw more power. Is that server power supplies? Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in the basement right now. And uh, so I have to like, <laughs> you guys know. So I have to, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clip that section of this video. Somebody clip that, please. Somebody clip that. What's going on guys, Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. Today we are here at the Mining Round Table for episode nine with the Hobbyist Miner and Red Fox Crypto. How are you guys doing today? Hey Best guys. day of my life. Best day of your life, perfect. That's what I like yep. to hear. <laughs> here with you guys, what can be better? Oh, that's so nice. Uh, so what have you guys been up to uh, this week? I know we're a little late recording and this video is going to be dropping a little later in the week. Uh, we had obviously life life things going on. So yeah. we're all dads, got families, jobs. So the whole nine. But what have you guys been up to? Anything good? Go ahead, obvious. Uh, I think in my perspective, just been condensing down my farm a lot, like kind of just strategizing and looking at like, all right, that motherboard's got a slot on it. Can I utilize it here and kind of rebuilding some rigs and uh, moving things around to try to optimize things a little bit more. Um, so that's really what I've been focused on. I took the weekend this past week with the family went away. So that was really nice. Just a nice little recharge. Um, other than that, uh, things have been good. I think just coasting along at this point. What about you, Mike? Uh, I feel so behind on like everything more than mm -hmm. ever right now. Um, Red Fox Jr.'s got a got a cold. He gave it to me again. Uh, so I feel like I've been sick for like a month. Right. Uh, did some yeah, dude. Did some, I know chump change. You feeling it too over there in that house? <laughs> Kids so, are like uh, walking diseases. I love them to death, <laughs> but they literally when they get to that age of being in school, they just take everything yeah. home and just get everybody sick. Oh my like, dude, I was like, I've been wearing a mask for like two years, you know, out, and like I just sure. got sick, and then I send my three year old to preschool, and it's like every week he's bringing some disease. It's a petri dish, uh, man. Seriously, so brutal. Some family time uh, and stuff, and obviously taking care of him. But um, mm -hmm. I feel I feel a little behind schedule, oh. but I still been busy. Um, released that video on that uh, mining GPU, that Sapphire G Pro, which don't buy that ever. It's not worth it. <laughs> don't even you don't have to watch my video if you're listening to this. Just don't buy that thing. Now, um, a question for you on that video yeah. for you: If the sixty six hundreds were not as easily available, would you get it? If a mining, if yeah, probably. I mean, it's still like yeah. in the grand scheme of things, it's a really nice. It's not terrible GPU. It's just like yeah. there's there you can get the GPU it's based off of at a cheaper cost. You know. Yep. Exactly. So I'm curious to see what the future is for that. Um, also, people were commenting like the that GPU is a different memory type than the Sapphire Pulse I was testing it against. Mm. So it was like, is that mining card specifically built? with Hynix or Micron or whatever it is, um, which maybe pulls more power. I don't uh, know, I see. Okay. but I'm over it. It's going to go sit on a shelf for a while until I figure out what to do with it. So that was nice. That was the big testing this week. What are you up to chump change? Dude, I feel like I lost like a month because being out <laughs> for a week and not paying attention to YouTube because like the whole COVID thing, man, it is. I literally, I don't even know what you're talking about. I have literally no idea what you're talking about. I have not seen that video. Um, obviously, what? I need to catch what? up on it. Dude, I, haven't, dude, on. Hold I on. haven't watched anything hold in a hold week. On. You don't you don't push your family aside and watch our videos? <laughs> I totally should, but I didn't. No, I actually, uh, it was crazy. So my, my son's one and my daughter is almost three. So like he takes two naps. When she goes down, he wakes up. It's like just yeah. all over the place schedule-wise. And the wife, I felt so bad because she's like, still trying to help with my son and like i'm just like go to bed like i got this i can take care of him but it's like i had no time for anything else literally just running around like a madman taking care of kids you're always changing one of them you know what i mean <laughs> feeding the other one it's just it's a nightmare so yeah i haven't watched anything on youtube and uh i actually finally got to record a couple of videos the past two days and uh i've been trying to do that while they're like playing i'm messing with the grow temp but i can't record because they're screaming you know what yeah. i mean so it's just <laughs> I uh, heard him. I heard him in your video. I heard it in your video. Did, did I? you? I, I honestly <laughs> wasn't sure if they got caught. Not even. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I imagine I, uh, you got. I imagine you got like one kid, like you're holding in one hand. You got one on your leg, camera. and you got a GPU in the other hand. <laughs> the grow tent video at the end of Monday's video. She, my daughter was hanging on my legs, 
as I was finishing that video. Oh man. <laughs> and I was so shocked she didn't say anything. I was like, thank you, because I didn't want to <laughs> do that take again. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh, so man. funny. My uh, my son, Red Fox Jr., like all the time, he's like, I want to go in the basement. He's three and a half. He's like, I want to go in the basement. I want to do Red yep. Fox things. And I'm like, buddy, Red Fox like, I got I to gotta record like a <laughs> video down there. And there's like no way you're going to be chill while I'm trying to yeah. do that. They don't get oh, it. That's funny. It's, uh, they just want to be with you. It's funny. Yeah, it is. Yeah. My son comes out. He's like banging on my keyboard. I'm like, I like unplugged <laughs> one and leave it on the floor so he can play with that. But Dude, I do the same thing. <laughs> I have like... I have keyboards and mice plugged into just like a USB outlet, yep. you know, just so it lights up. So he thinks it's working, but it's not oh, into a smart. computer where he can be like editing Hive OS play sheets and stuff because that's what he would be doing. That, dude, <laughs> too smart. Now I'm going to have to plug mine into the, with the wall. <laughs> Good dad. Good dad. Yeah, that's awesome. But oh, uh, we do have a few questions from uh, Discord. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's talk about those. So I have... Are you guys dual mining? That was one of the uh, questions we were supposed to get to when we were supposed to record last week. But are you guys dual mining? What do you what do you feel about it? You guys, what is that? Uh, the new one? I don't even know how to say it. I have no idea how to say it. There's, I know, dude. It's, it's there's Alathium. Okay, right? Alathium. And then the other is Ton Ton Coin. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So are you Those guys are into any of that? I, I am personally doing the Alathium a little bit, but I I have no idea. I don't even know what it means. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to take your take on it. So we'll start with Mike. What do you uh what you got? Yeah, um so I did the, the videos you didn't watch probably on both of those and um <laughs> definitely didn't watch. <laughs> <laughs> and I stayed up, oh. dude, I stayed up all night just to get a video out and you didn't watch it. Oh. But yeah, nice so guy, I did. Nice guy. <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm probably in the same boat as you. Um I don't know about hobbyists, but I don't know anything about those projects at all and it's just like for me it was like all right it's cool let me get a video out but also if i can only sacrifice a little bit of ethereum hash rate to also mine an additional cryptocurrency then i'm right. gonna do that so right now i have my five card 3080 ti rig mining ethereum and still mining ton coin um after i i haven't stopped since i recorded the video on it and now i'm also curious to see how much ton i've actually generated so, so that's a staking only coin, if I'm not there, mistaken, right? Yeah, but they're some, like trying to catch up or something by letting you mine it. Like I don't understand how yeah, that works. Apparently, there's um, I'm not an expert on this, so please, anybody that's gonna scream at me for getting this wrong while listening, comments below. How dare yeah, you? How dare you? Below, but apparently, you guys there's know nothing. A smart, <laughs> it's like a smart contract that's written, um, that okay. has a certain amount of coins that are gonna be released to miners, and once that's up, that's it. So okay. like, since interesting. Since I did that video, I don't even know when that was. I've mined 9.49 ton coin, which is currently worth $25.59. Hey, that's um, better okay. than Ravencoin Lite, so that's great. Yeah, and I'm sure like you know, all the YouTubers <laughs> did videos on yeah. it, so the right. difficulty is probably through the roof and profitability is down. But the one thing that I, I have noticed is though that rig when I was looking, didn't seem to be drawing much more power because it was just kind of displacing the Ethereum I was losing with Toncoin. Um, yep. That server power supply is screaming. So it's definitely drawing more power because that server power supply is like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the basement right now. <laughs> and uh, so I have to like, <laughs> you guys know. So I have to, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to clip that section of this video. Somebody clip that, please. Somebody clip that. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> clip that. Time out. Time out. Clip it. And when somebody starts up this video, that's the first thing they hear before the intro. That's gonna be my uh, that's gonna be my new beat noise from now on. Yeah. <laughs> when someone swears. Awesome. Uh, sorry, Mike. All right. What about you, Javi? I just want Mike catch up. So uh, I'll comment on if I'm dual mining now and how that's going. And then also I had a question uh, based off of some interesting point you bring you bring up there. Um, so I'm not dual mining and I'm not against it in any way. I think it's a phenomenal idea. I'll be honest. I just haven't had the time of day to invest into doing it. Um, and so I just haven't gotten to that point. And it makes me part of it is like that FOMO feeling, but it's also like the and I think everyone gets this with like a coin that pops or is popular. You get the like, oh, crap, like. Is that going to be worth something like at some point? Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I really should right. have like a bag. Like, I should have a bag of that. Like, I I'm the type of person where it's like, I feel like I should have a bag of everything. You know, like I want to, you know, just to be safe type of deal. Um, but yeah, so long story short, I'm not mining it at all. Uh, but I do think it's a great idea. 
um, after I actually had people in my Discord like, hey, when are you going to do a dual, uh, a dual mining video? And I'm like, I literally said, I'm not. I'm like, there. I was like, I know uh, several other YouTubers out there that have those videos. And I just linked them. And it's like, I don't need to be repetitive. Right. And I think that's a good, good, good talking point. Go off the off the path here. Just like a, as YouTubers in the content creation space, just because four other guys did it, it's like, I don't need to. They've done a phenomenal job. I don't need to just reproduce the same content. Right. Um, so that's why I didn't. It literally was like, I'm not going to make a video on it. Um, you know, I think our community's close knit enough where it's like, we see that stuff, you know, like we know it's coming or, or someone's done a really good job and I'm not going to do as good a job as some other people did. So I'm like, here, check their video out. It does everything for you. So, uh, but my question was, if Toncoin as a proof of stake coin can do these smart contracts when ethereum goes proof of stake in order to keep buzz within the mining community to a degree could they like randomly once a year do like a you know what i mean like exactly what just happened here like this is a great question max voltage where are you like yeah <laughs> yeah right Come that's here. like that's, that's like, what's going through my brain yeah. i'm like trying to get so, to him right now <laughs> I'm just curious. Like, I know hybrid discussions have come up with Ethereum and proof of stake and proof of work, and there's been these hybrid discussions that have come up multiple times. And you know, they keep saying June, but who knows if that's actually going to happen, guys? Let's be honest here. They could reschedule again. It could not be ready. But I'm really like, my interest is really now going towards. And someone leave a comment if you know. I, I don't know. I, I am yeah. don't know, but I'd love the answer. Can that's they a do a smart question. contract? That's Can a they do a smart question. contract every yeah. once in a while? I, you know? I, mean, I I don't see why they wouldn't be able to. I just don't think they have any interest mm. in it. They they think they're overpaying for security for miners and like all oh. that stuff. So it's just like I think uh, I think our our days are numbered for Ethereum. Mm. So Mike, Come do back. you like what is the what is the uh, overall reason that they're going to POS? Like, do you know? Is there like a lump like a a summary? I guess that we can explain. Like, do you know why they want to go to POS? Is it because of security stuff or? I th it was always in their roadmap, like from day one, was getting oh, there. Like, so mining was always supposed to be temporary. That's why you really can't, like, in the grand scheme of things, you can't blame them. Like, you can't, like, be mad. Cause, like, because they said, wanted this from the beginning. You okay. said that you were going to yeah. do this, and you're doing it. Right. Um, they, were, they wanted to do How it dare you? much, much earlier. Like, years, I think 2017, you know, was the topic was, like, they were going to do it that year. You know, here we are uh, five years later and it still hasn't happened. So you really can't fault them because they said they've wanted to do it for so long. But yep. a lot of the conversation that's come out in this last year, the IP 1559 and like all that stuff like that, they're overpaying for security. And it's like that stuff kind of rubs me the wrong way. EIP 1559 yeah. rubbed me the wrong way. You know, right. I'm probably picking at some some old wounds here. But like, I just think if you were just like, hey, guys, this is was always in the cards and we're, we're finally getting to the right place in development where we're going to do it, that would feel a lot better than saying like bad things about miners. Right. So. Yeah. I just hope it doesn't uh, it doesn't negatively affect the price or the project. I, I just really genuinely hope that that doesn't happen because like, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, it's obviously different, but Ravencoin, the having right, like supposed to be yeah. a big deal. It did nothing. It did nothing. Yeah. Let's just be real. Um, I mean, I haven't noticed anything. If anybody has, please leave it in the comments below. But it's price hasn't moved. It's just, you know, whatever. So I don't know. I, I'm hoping that the POS pushes the price up. But I mean, probably like everybody else. But who knows, yeah, really? I was, I was thinking that, too, because I mean, now you're in a space where you have to lock up Ethereum, 32 Ethereum to run a node. Right. Correct. It's so like, well, I'm, I guess what I'm curious about is that. Like the amount of Ethereum that is held versus sold then versus what it is now with mining. Like, is mm. it going to be, is there going to be less Ethereum hitting the markets that is created from node operators versus that is created from miners? I think right, that's I think really so. the thing I'm thinking right. about because then that is going to, you know, then that's things being sold, which is going to drive down the price. But if everybody's going to be holding on to try to get more, run more nodes, that should create Theoretically, the, like the yeah. price to go up. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, I hope for the demand. sake of yeah, yeah, I hope for the sake of all of us and everybody listening to this that that's our like you know thing that yeah. we look back and be like yeah, at least the price went up like 
triple. <laughs> oh, Even right, though we can't right. find it anymore, I think that Woo! was cool. And right. I, I think we'll all feel a little better about the situation, having mined right. it for so long. You know, I mean, probably not proud of it, but most of us know we'll still be doing like some unminable to Ethereum on, on <laughs> one or, or more GPUs at some point, I'm sure. Um, it, it just depends. It does depend on the price and what's what's profitable if it, if it works out that way. But um, this is kind of a good segue into the next question we had in Discord was, uh, are you guys still purchasing GPUs? I know we kind of go over this a little bit, um, but they want to know if there is more of a direction that you're leaning towards with like the mining aspect of it coming closer to pos like do you guys have a specific coin that you're like this is probably going to be it i mean i probably know you guys answers but i guess we could start with hobbyists do you want to uh take this one away do you have an idea sure so um <clears throat> i've continued to stay the path i am which is more like the 6600s um i'm getting ready to do a 12 gpu build for 6600s and 6600 xts uh in addition to that um i am being a little more frugal when it comes to my new egg like entries like i play new egg every day and i'm not using a bot or anything like that like just using new egg the way i always have and i've hit new egg about seven times so far with the new egg shuffle uh and i just Every day I say play it because literally it's it's like playing the lotto. Like you're just kind of putting your number right. in. You're hoping you do well. Uh, but I'm being a little bit more stingy on those things. Um, I really do feel over the last month, Newegg's prices have gone up on the shuffle. Um, they yep. flooded a lot of the 3050s in there. And it's like, dude, nobody wants that garbage. Get out of here. Yeah. Um, but I've stayed in the 3060, 3060 Ti range. But I've actually like stopped entering for the 3060 Ti's just because their prices are just a little high for me right now. Like now that I have like the 1660 or the um, 6600s and such, the, the 3060 TIs aren't looking as attractive to me. Now, granted, they're going to hold their value. And I think that's something that we start to look at is like the 3000, 3000 series cards will hold their value regardless of the crypto market. And so I kind of taken the approach that, you know, graphics cards and investment, like it's not just the mining part. You could have literally been buying up graphics cards and be storing them in a closet right now. Like they're they're like they're they're an investment, and they're I think they're definitely worth it. Um, but that's kind of where I am now. I've slowed down a little bit uh, over the last month. I probably picked up about ten graphics cards off of new, and then also off of, also off of um, Facebook Marketplace. So anybody that says they can't get a hold of them, you're just trying to find MSRP prices, and that's your issue. Um, right. I'm not. I'm not like. All my six sixty six hundreds have been bought off of Newegg. Uh, have been bought off of um, B and H. Uh, all websites that are fully accessible to the public, and Whoa. all the second hand. Yeah, and Mike Mike has helped me out a lot with that. Uh, he has. No, yeah, he just he just slides them in the chat, and I'm like, mother. Mm. Um, and then everything else is Facebook Marketplace second hand, and like I'm later reaching out to people and picking them up. So you guys get the same thing. You guys get the, uh, you know. I don't know how you guys are finding these, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you're just not looking hard enough. And yeah. you have blinders. And you have people have blinders on. They're like, MSRP. All I look for is MSRP. And it's like, that is a pipe dream on most graphics cards, especially 3000 series cards. Get out of here. Like, not happening. So wow. that's where I'm at. What about you, Red Fox? What are you, what have you been buying up? Yeah, I got a couple of things, but you just maybe maybe think about something that, I mean, it's, it's crazy that it's still relevant. So I did this video like a year ago, gamers versus okay. miners. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, like super cringy video probably to go watch. I now. am so making a note to go watch it. Yep, making a note. But um, some, of the, some of the things you made me think about is just like putting in the work. Mm. And that is something that miners will do because we're looking for many multiples of graphics cards. Um, But you could, as a gamer, put in the same amount of work and get a card you know we're not everything we're doing is anybody can do right it's just like um are you are you willing to do that are you willing to go stand in line somewhere are you willing to sit on new egg and refresh the website are you willing to enter the new egg shuffle literally every single day like we are yep. you'll have your best chance at getting a gpu so i don't know you just made me think of that but um this last week uh it's Couple big ones actually. So Mrs. Red Fox, I had her start entering the shuffles for thirty nineties, and she got a thirty ninety. Asus tough. Damn. Now she's separate account. She has a separate account than you do. Yep, separate account. Okay. So that um okay. that got delivered uh actually like really fast, like two days, which is really fast for Newegg. That got yeah. delivered. So now I can do my thirty ninety build, 
and um i just Damn, came that's up. gonna be sick yeah it's gonna like suck that's all the power sick. from my neighborhood i can't wait i have a brown out or something <laughs> yeah the lights are so <laughs> dimming around <laughs> He has, he has, he's going to be like, I got a six GPU 3090 rig. Here we go. Yeah. Let's power it up. And he's going to be like, mother effer. I can't even power <laughs> no, this. Thing no, we're house. going to take that clip. And yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, you need a home. You need a home. You need a home for that. I got, I got a little space in here. For nice. You. Nice. <laughs> I, you know, I was wondering, I might put, I was thinking about putting it in the 12 card mm. Octo miner. Cause like, it'll have nice spacing. Yeah. Good airflow. Yeah. Maybe to replace good pads airflow. on all those. I yep. might try something like that, but um, that's gonna be sick. That's like what seven over eight hundred mega hash, some seven hundred mega hash in a in a rig. Anyway, then the other card I just bought today, which I just because I want one of everything, so I came up on the EVGA <laughs> notify queue for the twelve gigabyte thirty eighty for the win. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I guess fine. It's like twelve ninety nine, and I have uh, that's not people, bad. Yeah, pe well, also thank you. If you're listening to people that have been using my EVGA like associates code, because I had $183 in EVGA bucks. Oh, damn. That I applied to that, that took it down. So I know people have been using it. I never even advertised this. I don't know how, um, but I appreciate that. So knock that down. So I don't know. I'm going to test it. I was initially thinking of like maybe there's a gamer out there, maybe somebody I work with. I know there's a couple people that have 3080s, the original full hash rate yeah. ones. That yep. don't mind, and I'm like, maybe you want this one with two gigabytes more. That's Ooh. better, and you could play games <laughs> faster. <laughs> so I like I'm, where your head's at. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about maybe seeing if somebody wants to do a swap on it. Otherwise, it seems like it does really, you know, nice on like Raven and all that stuff. Just pulls a ton of power. But um, that I just bought today. Oh, yeah. So I think those are the two big ones, which is crazy. It's like. Three, over three, it's like thirty five hundred dollars in GPUs in, for two graphics cards in one week. But yo, so like, now, didn't did they change something with the EVGA Q thing? Am I, am I mistaken by yeah. saying that? Yeah. I know you they did with Best Buy, right? With the two hundred oh. bucks to be like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But didn't EVGA do something? Yeah, it's like their three point version of the Q, where <laughs> it's so it used to be first to enter the Q, first to get picked. Which mm -hmm. was great because that's how I got a ton of thirty seventy Ti's and thirty eighty Ti's in the beginning. Well, that's like that's life. That's how it is, you know. First come, first yeah. serve, right? That's yeah. And I would just sit there and put in the work, like multiple tabs right. open. I would have multiple accounts, you know, probably not supposed to, but I would do it anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, the th after that, they changed <laughs> to like they look at like your purchase history now. Yeah. Like if you've gotten a thirty series GPU, and that weights into their Q system somehow. And this, the 3080 12 gigabytes, I was pretty fast on, but here we are, you know, I don't know how long, months later, and I finally got selected on one of the accounts. So yeah, there's something going on with uh, however they wait previous. Oh, so it's probably purchases. how many you've purchased, they'll give you the opportunity first type deal? Like, yeah, that's I guess if, weird, you have, like, if you have like an account that's aged, but you don't have any purchases on it, you probably get picked first, you know, I, I get it. Oh, okay. I get it. Yeah, versus, no, it's like, interesting. So like, versus like I, this guy's got like 10, 13. 30 series cards purchased. We'll get him later. Cool. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the system. I was looking into it as well. And like at first I was like, okay, they're putting a system in place to get 30 series cards in hands of people, quote, gamers that don't have right. one based off of that. And I was like, okay, I can get behind this. That makes sense. Okay, sure. But then when you look at the rich get richer mentality on there, it's like, but wait. That's how I thought it was, yeah. Oh, wait, we haven't forgot about our loyal people. So if you've yeah. gotten your 30 series cards and you have registered them too, that's important. You know, register them and then proof of purchase and all that fun stuff with them. They're like, we haven't forgotten about you because you're like our VIPs. So, so that's we, what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> like, it, it's like somebody in their marketing department came up with a really cool idea that it's like, we want to track who has 3000 series cards and who doesn't. And the people that don't, we want to get them in the hands of people. And they were like, oh my God, amazing idea. And then the guy in the back went, what about our loyal customers? And they went, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so our loyal customers get to go our VIP aisle and they get more. And so it's like, yeah, okay. they get the fast pass at Disney and these guys stand in the normal line. <laughs> yeah. So, so it is, it is, yeah, it's kind of wonky. That's it's interesting. The same, the same idea of what, what Best Buy is doing with kind of pay to play, like, Right. It's like, are you 
you really kidding me? Like, yeah, it's kind of wow. ridiculous. So um, it's like, all right, fine. Best Buy's off my list. Like, sorry, not interested in paying it. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, think about it. it's. I, you got Best Buy's, their total tech or whatever. It's like two hundred dollars a year, and then you get like a special entry to get GPUs. GameStop's been doing the same thing for a while now. Like, if you're whatever their membership is, then you get a special entry. And then and then Newegg just says if you want a GPU, you also have to get this piece of garbage other thing <laughs> as a combo. It's B450. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I already have 25 of them. I don't need any more. <laughs> but here's the five. Here's the 550. You know yeah, you right. want this one. Yeah. Oh, and then, uh, Ant Online, another one, right? If you want this GPU, you have to have a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse oh. and a cooler and an Xbox Live membership with it. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, real quick before we get off topic. So cards I'm looking into, pretty much same as yeah. you guys. 6600 yeah. XT, 6600, and A2000s, but a two thousands way too pricey. Don't recommend buying them. Um, yeah. Absolutely, if you can go with anything, I would six six hundred or six six hundred XT. Um, you can also at Micro Center. I heard walk out with as many AMD cards as you want. There's only limits yeah. on Nvidia, which is freaking weird. But I whatever it is what it is. So if you guys want one of those? I mean, I'm sure you could find one. Um, it's, it's, Mike, it's, how, how close yeah. is a micro center to your place? Yeah, it's like an hour. It's not far. It's far. Yeah. Should, yeah. We, you and I, you and I should make a trip together for a video collab to micro center. Should we pick up to yeah. change first? Should we pick them up? Yeah. Pick, we'll pick them up on our <laughs> way and then we'll loop back around <laughs> and then we'll go, right. keep going. There's, there's literally one, like, I think it's like 30 minutes for me. So. <laughs> You got a guy you could send there. Yeah, I just send <laughs> it's easier. Um, actually, talking about things we just purchased, Mike, you have a FPGA, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so let's tell me about this because yeah. obviously I'm not into mining as long as you. I don't really know what an FPGA is. So if you can give us a little summary yeah. of what that is. Sure. So uh, first, it, I guess the first thing is it stands for Field Programmable uh, Gate Array is what FPGA stands for. Um, and the way you think Flux about capacitor. them, yeah, the way you think about them <laughs> is that they're a piece of hardware that's built and that it's meant to be programmed for later. So this is now my second uh, journey into FPGA. So the first one I have is a Black Miner F1, which sits behind me in a lot of my videos. Looks like kind of like an ASIC, but um, Here's like, I guess a couple things. They sit between like a GPU and an ASIC, whereas an ASIC can do one thing only and it does it really well. A GPU is like a jack of all trades, can do many things, but not as well. FPGA sits somewhere in the middle. So it can do a lot of things better than a GPU, but not as well as an ASIC can. The issue with FPGAs is that they are dependent on somebody creating what's called a bitstream to give it like software to make it mine. So until that happens, it's nothing. It's a, just a piece of hardware. Until somebody develops some type of software called a bitstream to put it to work, to use it, it's to program it, it does nothing. So versus like now you have so much mining software that's been out, like you just buy a GPU and just, and just start mining with it. You can't do that with FPGA unless somebody has already taken the initiative to build a bitstream for it. Then you get to this weird space where they're, do they make that public or do they keep it private? Mm -hmm. There are places that will buy FPGAs and then pay a private developer to create them a private bitstream. So only they have it. So maybe only they can mine Ethereum or Ravencoin or something else and nobody else can because they paid somebody to build it specifically for them. Wow. So with the, um, in my previous experiences, with the Blackminer F1, like that company, Blackminer created the bitstreams. So in buying their machine, you essentially subscribed to them creating bitstreams for you. What's different now is um, Team Redminer has created a public bitstream for Ethereum for both the Squirrel Miner. I can't remember the name of it. Red Panda has a video. He has it. And then also this new Xilinx Varium C1100, which is what I got. So they created an Ethereum bitstream for it built into their miner. So, I mean... Spoiler here is that thing does 78 mega hash for a hundred watts. Wow, on Ethereum, that's killer. Which is it blows my mind. Wow. And like, so, is it hard cost? to install the stuff? Like, 
to my no, like dude it's too it's lit oh my god it's literally it's literally food and tie the west were launched team red miner and they've they've made it they've coded it so it just instantly downloads the bitstream and then sets default fpga clocks and just mines you don't have to do anything you just i literally launched you'll see in my video i launched hive os and i pulled up the shell and it just okay now i'm mining on this are you FPGA. dropping this video tomorrow is that the plan uh either tomorrow or the next day yeah so wow, it awesome. might drop the same day as today or yeah, yeah <laughs> tomorrow so but go, wa go watch it <clears throat> yeah that's dude that's crazy yeah. so before we drop this video can we still <laughs> buy these and how much are they <laughs> You can still buy them. The lead time, I think, is five to six weeks right now, which gives me to my, my second point um, is like all it can do right now is Ethereum because nobody's developed another bitstream for it. Got it. So then you're looking at, um, you know, five, six weeks from now, and then you're pushing close to the merge. And I think they're like eleven, twelve hundred dollars $1,200 uh, for this. So but it has like, potential to do something else at a oh, later it could date. Do, it could do, yeah, dude. It could, it could do anything. Some people in my Discord were chatting with the That's Team so Red Miner devs, and they were like, "What could this?" Because apparently, there's also like, take this with a grain of salt. Because I haven't, I haven't double checked this myself. Apparently, there's another core in there that's unused in Ethereum mining that, if put to work on Toncoin, could do like four giga hash while it also mines Ethereum. Oh damn! So like the potential is is out of control. Massive. It's just it's just apparently when I was reading up on the the Team Red Miner Discord, the devs like put a ton like months and months and months of work into creating the bitstream for it. So it's a significant amount of development that has to happen. Right. You know, which then you know, I think they charge a higher uh, percentage. Yeah, I was gonna say fee, what is their percent? Is, yeah, I think it might be four, but don't quote me on that. Which is fine. You guys put in the work to make this thing, which is. The most efficient mining efficient, thing that yeah. I have, period. I just I, I look at it and I just I can't believe what it's doing. So um interesting. You know, what else like do they want to do a Raven coin uh or a flux right. stream in the future? That's what it all comes down to. And that's where my next question lies actually about this. Does this card get like super hot with Ethereum? Yeah, the yeah, so yeah, so you gotta um it has no cooler. It's built to be in like a static um uh, like a server case. Um okay. which is so you have to, so I reached out to somebody on their Discord who, who team member our Discord who builds a kit with a external fan and a 3D printed bracket. So in my I video, know. I install all that just to keep the memory cool. But um, still like, I'm th you know, I'm comparing this thing to GPUs and the memory right. is running like, like 78, 79 degrees Celsius. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's great. Like I'm used to 110 yeah. degrees and I got to figure it out. You know? <laughs> so, um. Yeah, man, it is. It is like it is so cool. Like I'm instantly like I want to buy so many more of these. But there's that like part in your brain that's like, but there's such a risk because all there I can is. do is Ethereum right now. Like I'm so and that's what FPGAs come down to. You're so dependent on somebody else doing the work, the developer doing the work, and making it worth your while. Um, I'll say, you know, my F last FPJ, the Black Miner. By the t when I got into it, I'm lucky I got into it when I did because it was a hundred percent worth it. Right now, it makes no right. money, right? But at so the time, why? Like, why does it make no money now? Because what happens, and <clears throat> this is kind of different with that one, is that all of the ASICs were then built for what it mined. So the FPG, oh. it was like it was like GPUs were first mining this crypto. So a um, couple were CKB was one, Cadena, right? Cadena mm, uh, was one yeah, you could mine that. on GPUs. And then FPGAs just crushed it and like just crushed GPUs and it wasn't worth mining on GPUs anymore. And FPGAs get a little bit of time of crazy profitability. And then the ASIC gets built and it kicks out the FPGA and the ASIC takes over from there on. So that's like how it traditionally would work because that was a very core intensive FPGA. Obviously, this one's got to be different because it's Ethereum. So it's got a lot of memory that it's being able to put to work, um, which I think makes it something I'm excited about for the future because previous FPGAs couldn't really do any memory intensive algorithms. And a lot of the prog pal like Raven and Firo, and then also even flux on Equihash are like sharing kind of the core and the memory. So there is potential there if somebody wants to get to work and develop the bitstream for it. But, um, that's, that's FPGAs, man. That's everything I've been diving into. Uh, I have the video coming up and I'll yeah. probably do some more on it, but cool. it's, it's so cool. It's the coolest thing just to see that result. Of like 78 mega hash for 100 watts i'm just like i don't even understand what's happening right now <laughs> absolutely that uh that makes me think as well like you had brought up the point and there, there's kind of that disclaimer for people is just as you had said like when eth goes proof of stake it becomes a paperweight unless 
the bitstream is developed. And so there's risks, just like you said. But that's the same thing with a lot of these. Like uh, uh, my cousin reached out to me actually today. It was really funny. And he was interested in some of these Ethereum ASIC miner setups. And it's like, yeah, these are awesome. But it's like, as soon as Ethereum goes proof of stake, what else can it do? Now, there's multiple other coins that, that run off of ETH hash. So it's like, okay, great. But now you're going down avenues that are, aren't, like, they're not as profitable. So you have to yeah. keep that in mind. So that's always the risk of, like, going with these dedicated devices. Now, granted, your, your device, FPG, uh, FPGA, has lots of potential, but you got to wait for somebody else. So it could be a paperweight for six months yeah, or until something else is developed. Um, so... I do think it's a great alternative to GPU mining when it comes to like supply and, and price of GPUs and stuff like that. It really makes you go, hmm, there's a lot of alternatives out there that might be worth it. Yeah, I was thinking like, man, if it was six months ago. Oh, yeah. I, I would have I like, Damn. why would I buy any GPU? You know? <laughs> right. You That's what I was like thinking about. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. That's amazing. <laughs> it really is. All right. Well, I guess... Uh, that's that's also a good segue for a grow tent talk because that thing's definitely not going in a grow tent. I would assume. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. What, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Where I'm going to put it? It's on the test bench now. That's a good point, though. Like, there's people that have like right. rigs of six of them that looks like a minor rig, but yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with that thing, man. That's crazy. You just have to have fans beating all over it. I mean, but the 3D yeah. bracket, I can't wait to see that. So I'm I'm excited for that. So. Let's get on to the grow tent talk. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you guys seen my uh, last two videos. So I have now a bunch of GPUs of 111 GPUs in that grow tent. And my house was still cold this morning. So <laughs> I decided to throw an ASIC in it and drop that video. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically what I'm up to. But I know the hobbyist, you started a whole mining room, which is amazing. So tell me how you like it. Like, is everything going great? Those fans working good? Like, how's it going? Sure. So believe it, like I actually have a video that is like uh, in that same aspect of like I built a, a, a kind of grow tent into my basement per se. I mean, that's what I've done pretty much is I built a room based off of that. And I took everything I did wrong with a grow tent because I did so many things wrong. And I remember messaging Red Fox like forever about stupid shit that I did. And it just didn't work out at all. Um, <laughs> of different, of, of different, different things I tried and like, like now looking back on it, like when I have these conversations with people, I'm like, you're doing a grow tent. Don't look at anything other than an 800 or an eight inch fan. It's yeah, like right. 800, right. 800 CFM and higher. But don't even, don't try. Like I did it and I linked people to videos. I'm like, I've done it. See, here it is right here. Um, right. But the grow tent is, and I tell people this all the time. I'm like, because I get a lot of this in my Discord. I have a grow tent chat and they're constantly asking questions like, hey, I'm just into mining. I haven't experienced the summer yet. And I'm like, a grow tent is God's gift to the world for a home miner. Now, granted, mo most of the people I recommend pull in your ambient air in your house and then exhaust it outside in some avenue. You'll get through the summer. Everything will be OK. You'll pay a higher electrical cost because you're just sucking out your AC. Um but yeah, I highly recommend it. I mean, it's, I have one out in my garage right now, an AC Infinity one that I plan to set up at some point or another. Don't tell my wife yet, even though I built this room next to me. Um, but uh, I have like the room I built was literally designed around a grow tent, keeping those things in mind, bringing in cold air towards the bottom of it and exhausting it. Um, and it's been a process of elimination, but now it's it's awesome. Um I mean, I've already started to see when like it's 50 degrees outside, you know, these stupid, weird, warm summer days. And it's like, oh, my God, it is hot in that room right now. It gets up to 90 then. But like right now, it's 58 degrees in that room right now. Um, and it's 71 right here. So it's six feet away um, and it's doing the trick. So I love it. It's worked out really well. I think for me, uh, moving forward over the next, I'd say, several months, I'm going to slowly start to swap out my eight inch fans or my six inch fans. Or eight inch fans, uh, but I have to, I will have to do the um, the uh, converters on the end to go from eight to six because all my duct work is, is six and I, I don't have the spacing to do the eight. But uh, yeah, it's awesome. It, it was, it, it's all, it's a really good idea. So I am very thankful of the Grow 10 idea. Um, you've done an awesome job, Trump Change. I thought the same thing when I saw your video today, which would have been yesterday for people watching. I was like, damn, that is, that is like, 
Like I, I am not, I'm not touching hard piping like you did, but that was oh, really good. Like it my, was like, my hands hurt. There's cuts everywhere. If you looked in the video today, I had a bandaid on my middle finger cause I have a gash that just sucked. <laughs> it hurts so bad. It's like the most painful little cut ever. Oh man. Yeah, so, Mike, so, what are you doing? So, yeah, I was, was going to segue into him and say too, yeah. Red Fox introduced me to grow tents. Like I think he introduced us all. <laughs> yeah. But now what is he going to do? What's he going to well, do now? That's what I'm wondering. Actually, Let's go. I want to hear it. Sideways, server racks. What are you doing? What are you <laughs> yeah, doing? Yeah, remember that? <laughs> well, so I watched your video, uh, Come Change, today. Yeah. And I it just actually took down my grow tent because I'm like, I can't. This guy's the king now. He's the grow tent <laughs> king. So what am I? Some imposter. Uh, yeah. But no, seriously, man. I, dude, so inspired by all the stuff you're doing. I have like a thousand questions uh, about yeah. everything. I was but, so scared um, to cut into it. That was my scariest part. Oh, I was yeah, like, yeah. how am I supposed to do this? I was like, yeah, I got to cut this tent. I'm like, damn it. You know, worst case, I throw away 200 bucks. But I'm like, all right, yeah, I got to figure this out. So the Hawk glue gun, dude, it was, I was <laughs> The shocked. Ryobi glue how gun. Good it worked. I couldn't even believe okay. it. I was like, question, this thing question. is the balls. <laughs> did you have that already or did you buy that specifically no, for it was, this? No, it was 40 bucks. So I had the batteries <laughs> already um, yeah. because I have like... I have a compressor. That's what I have for uh, like testing plumbing pipes and stuff. We have to pressure test all of our stuff. So I had a battery operated one that I could carry around to inspections with me. And I had like a six pack of batteries and I'm like, I have everything I need for this thing. And I have glue sticks. I'm just, yeah. I'm buying this thing. So I took it home 40 bucks. I was like, the other one's like 20 anyways. And they're freaking tied to a cord. I'm like, there's no chance I'm dragging this cord around trying to do this. So yeah, yeah but I was, too I was fun. <laughs> Was that like your most manly Home Depot purchase of all time? <laughs> no, actually, you know what? I didn't want to be embarrassed, so I did send my mother on the way here. <laughs> she was on the way here to watch the kids. I was like, you saw the Home Depot? Just send me pictures of what they got. She was like, they have this one. I was like, oh, there it is. Get that one. Get that one. Oh, dude, that's so funny. <laughs> I, w I wish it was pink. I wish it was in pink. Oh, my God. I, I want to rock it. I don't even care. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh <laughs> I was actually down there today measuring because if you guys have seen any of my videos in the last six months, I am well beyond the size of my now second grow tent. Right. So I'm trying to figure out uh, getting a third one down there. And I'm I'm probably going to go similar to the size that you have, Chump Change. Just looking at the AC Infinity ones. Um, the issue is going to be in my basement, the main um, support beam that runs down. I have a ranch house. The main support beam that runs down the whole basement is, is yeah. lower then the grow tent would be. So it'd be too tall mm. to go where I want it to go, which is where my current grow tent is, and then expand where my rest of my rigs are. So it's like, all right, now I got to reconfigure my whole basement, you know, right. and the studio part and the the great red husky shelving that we share. Mm. Um, and I also would want it to be between the two windows that I have, which is where my current grow tent is, because I would like this summer As to you know. find, <laughs> yeah, finally experiment with the in, because I haven't done an in. Um, directly to the tent. It's just been the other window open. So my whole basement is kind of like the inn. Right. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do, but I, I got to get everything in there because I know summer's coming and it's going to be really challenging. Yeah. And uh, I'm thinking about doing the intakes and then the two exhausts out. I guess a couple things I'm concerned about is right now with the current tent, I do two eight inch exhausts and that keeps it okay. I don't think I have the room to go to three eight inch exhaust, but I think if I did intakes directly in, that would probably be fine with the two eight inches that I have. Cause I've never done direct intakes or boosted yeah. intakes into the grow tent. Um, overall it's been like the best thing I've ever done, you know, to help, uh, cool the, the GPUs, especially in the summertime. Right. One, one thing that came I up, I just did a, a maintenance video replacing a bunch of fans and somebody commented and I was thinking about this too. They're like, Hey, probably the reason that a lot of your fans are, are really dying is because they're in the grow tent, which because of the heat in there, which my mm. grow tent stays pretty, pretty toasty. It's probably drying up the oil um, yep. on them and causing that to happen. So I was like, ah, it's probably a really good call. And I've been really like, um, my grow tents, I let them get hot. I let them get to like 100, 100, 110 uh, Fahrenheit. As long as the GPUs are like 60, you know, Below 70, maybe 71, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm like, fine. At least my AC is not working over time. Right. But I, I, anyway, long story short, I'm going to get a bigger grow tent. I'm going to experiment with intakes. And one of the questions I had for you, Chump Change, I know hobbyists, you've shown this in one of your videos when you do a grow tent stuff, is the filtering on the way in. 
Yep. So right. are you are you using I, I don't know if I didn't catch it in your video I watched, are you using filter boxes on the way in? So, are you doing nothing? What's the deal there? Right now I'm not doing anything. Um the issue with filters is it restricts the flow so much that it's it, it's just gonna make your fans struggle really hard if you don't have enough intakes. So I am actually I have the windows I have in the basement, I could fit they're six inch by I think 14 by eight inch round like rectangles and I could fit four of them in that window like casing. So I'm going to have a fourth eight inch duct coming into this tent and only have, well, actually I'm going to have three exhausts out. Um, once I do that, then I'm probably going to do a big square mesh filter on the outside yeah. before it goes into the actual house. Um, and I'm going to see how that works. And if it works well, then I'll keep it. But if it doesn't, to be honest, the amount of like the way I designed this with the T and the cap at the bottom and the whole like circular loop with the holes on the top, most of the dust is going to get stuck inside the ductwork. It's not going to come out into the GPUs because it's for one traveling a long way. And two, when the, the, the pipes are cold and like any type of condensation, if there is any, it's going to trap all that BS anyways. Cause like your normal ductwork in your house has to be, it's, well, it's not, it doesn't have to be, but it's supposed to be dusted out every once in a while. Like it builds up dust no matter what you do. Um, so that I'm just going to play it by ear, man, to be honest. Cause I mean, I clean my GPUs anyways, let's be real. You know, that's kind of why I put them on the sluice frames. I want to be able to take them out, blow them all off and then put them back instead of like, you know, one by one with the hangers. It's just a lot easier, but one, yeah. yeah so my, my to plan. comment on the filter idea, um, I have <laughs> actually found, so I, I have, quite a bit of active intake. All my intakes are active now. Um, so I'm bringing in all that air and then exhausting all that air. So I have four active intakes and four active exhaust. Um, and what I have found is actually like, um, I have to clean out on the outside of my house, the exhaust, cause it's bringing in a lot of that. So like, and it's exhausting it. And I'm like, holy cow, like this is in my exhaust. This is what it's looking like. And then I've noticed in my mining room, like, I've gotten a lot of that. So uh, what I'm doing on my side is I would not do filters if you don't have an active intake. So like if you're just doing a passive intake, you're uh, just as Trump has said, I think you're going to block off more than you, you need. But if you have an active intake with like an, AC, an inline fan or whatever, um, I would. So for me, I'm putting mine all the way inside the room and I'm building a metal sleeve up against the wall where that hole is so I can drop in a 12 inch by 12 inch filter. And I can, and then, so it's going to go from outside, inside, through the inline fan, through the sh short ductwork run, and then it's gonna hit that filter. Yes, I'm gonna run into, it's, yes, it's going to cut down on some of that intake, but I'm feeling with the fact of swapping everything over to those eight, eight, you know, those eight inch fans, I'll have a pretty good amount of push behind it. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do. So then I could just, Swap, you know, make a note and just swap out those filters, you know, just grab it, pull it out, put a new one in and it doesn't become cumbersome because what I'm noticing is like. Because I'm pulling in so much outside air, so that is something I do recommend, um, but I think I can speak for most of us, especially Chump Change and I is grow tents are so like trial and error. Like yeah. it's like, I'm going to try this and then it fails and you're like, really and that's exactly how i am like that's how my entire go back and watch all my grow tent videos it is all trial and error like try it and it failed all right try something else and it <clears throat> fails so yeah i was uh thinking about last year when spring came and so i have the two fans just exhausting and then i have a basement window open that's just pulling in outside air and i remember when the spring was happening i went to my basement one day and i was just like pollen. everything is coated in pollen in my basement mm -hmm. And I was like, this sucks. Uh, so, oh, yeah. um, but so one of the things that I just did is one I have I had two Vivo Sun eight inch fans. One of them died, right? So I only had one going. And it was it was okay during this time of year. But the basement was still pretty, I mean still pretty toasty down there. Like I had to, I would wear tank tops and flip flops in my basement when I would be like working on it. So I replaced the dead Vivo Sun with the AC Infinity, and I have to wear a hoodie in my basement now. It is so cold with, that, <laughs> with the air being pulled in, and I, I cannot believe the difference. It's like in the hottest part of my basement is like 72 degrees, but where I sit and film videos, it's got to be like 50, 
low 60s mm-hmm. with just changing yeah. to that different inline fan so i just i'm so impressed uh by that right now but i am thinking about filtering i'm thinking about what i want to do for a setup coming up um i think spring will be here before we know it yep, so right. i think big grow 10 is the next thing i'm going to do but to echo with with all of you guys i think it's pretty much for a home miner one of the best things that you can do Yep. One of the questions I just had is we're talking about filtering. I don't know if you guys know. I don't like what is a big we're essentially on a small scale replicating what big mining farms do. Yeah. You know, they'll have like hot cold aisles, chump change. You've you've replicated that. They'll have huge fans taking out air and push it in there. Do they filter anything? I don't know if I've ever so I've seen what, like water walls to help what filter. They, do is they right? put like a uh, you get like a really fine screen okay and you more or less you can they have like sheets of it you can buy it like eight feet long five feet long and they just stretch it out across the face and they'll layer it a couple times and that screen itself will collect the the little particles of dust or anything like that so when the spring does come i was planning on building some sort of box outside anyways for like Mm -hmm. to deflect the sun temperature from the cold air coming in or the warm air coming in it would just to help it cool down in the pro like in the process, but I want to put or I will put if I need to screen on the side, but I'll do like, you know, I'll staple it myself. I'm not it's not gonna be a filter that can come off. I'll just it'll be a box, goes over the window well, then I can take it off and I can blow it out. You know what I mean? If that makes I sense. did um I did put in the Discord chat, not sure if you can view it, Mike, based off of the way you have things designed with the with the recording, but um that is the filter box that I bought. And that's the one that I showed on on my videos, which is literally a box that has little wing nuts on it. You open it, and it has a 10-inch filter in it. It's a Merv 10-inch filter in it, um, and it's designed for like that 6-inch or 8-inch intake. So you could absolutely go that way if you needed to. But I I do feel filters the way to go. Um, I've been lazy and not done it yet. I got the filters sitting in the other room. I got the angled aluminum in the other room. But I agree with you. It is... It's a necessary evil, I think. Um, and uh, I think you'll notice it. I noticed it with my grow tent. When I was doing it without my filter, I was starting to get like dust bunnies in the bottom of the grow tent. And I'm like, where are these coming from? And it's just stuff just collecting in the bottom. Not a ton, but some. Yeah. Yeah. Crypto mining garage had the pollen issue. Because <laughs> yep. I took the filters out and I was like, <laughs> I just, when I cut all the other six holes, because I only had three to begin with and I had three filters. And then, uh, yeah, I cut the other six in. So I had nine total. I went in one day and oh my gosh, it was literally like a little tumbleweed of pollen. <laughs> like, Dude, do you want to know what the worst bad. thing I had was? I guess I had like gnats get sucked in, like a oh, lot yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. Bugs. And so I, Dude, so I had uh, a Zotac, number one fan, chump change Zotac, uh, 3060 <laughs> in, a, in a PC. It was a, the original V1 and it's just in an open PC, no door on it. And it was like the first thing closest to the window. That was open, and I guess it sucked all the gnats in first. Oh. And I looked at it, and they were oh. like stuck in the thermal pads and stuff. <laughs> and like, oh, I was dude. like, oh my oh. god! And then I looked at my grow tent, and at the bottom where the intakes were, they were. I mean, it just looked like dirt because they were all like disintegrated gnats on the bottom of the grow tent. Oh, they all dried out, right? Yeah, and I was like, oh, this is so disgusting. I got to figure something out here. Oh, that's terrible. That's <laughs> absolutely terrible. Yeah, last last run in with gnats I had. I think I was riding my motorcycle and I didn't have glasses on like a butthole and I had my visor up, literally. <laughs> went through like a, a swarm of them and they just went right in my eyes. And I was like, oh my God, I had to pull over immediately. <laughs> it was terrible. Um, all right, so we're getting, uh, we're getting pretty close to the end here, but I do want to talk about one last thing, which is um, being safe when it comes to crypto mm-hmm. and Discord, especially mm-hmm. because I've noticed... There's been quite a few people, for one, replicating my account, trying to pretend to be me. Then Sebs, he's been getting replicated as well. And then on top of that, people are doing this like Discord, uh, the Nitro sh- BS, like three months before. Uh, yeah. And yeah. they hacked, like Yashnik got hacked. There's a couple people that posted links and added everybody inside my Discord. I'm like, what the hell's going on? So just be safe. That's all I really want to say. Just obviously, it's make sure it's us like make sure you can see the role it says owner like people are literally putting emojis and like writing like admin or whatever next to my name so i mean you guys will know my discord you can see top right 
we're usually right at the top and that's us um what do you guys have to say about this mike do you want to touch on it a little bit it's like the weirdest thing man because it's like i feel bad that it's happening like people are like oh did you add me as a friend and want to talk to me I'm like, yeah, oh, right. And no, you... I, it wasn't me. I'm sorry. And it's just yeah. like, <laughs> you know, it's like I, I really feel bad, and it's I, I don't know. I don't like feel responsible it's for true. it, but I feel like it's it's my image, you know, that's being mm-hmm. recreated, and, and there's a fraudster out there. Um, and the first thing I try to do is like, how can I protect the people that hang out in my community? And it's like, I, sure. I, what can I do except react to that kind of stuff when it pops up? Like. You know, that somebody says something, I go, look, yeah, they joined the server and I ban them. Um, but that's all you, you know, can do. Yeah. And then like on the other end, you guys know YouTube, how many, how many, how many hours do you spend a week deleting YouTube spam comments at this point? Oh like impersonators gosh. and people trying every to trick day. people. Every day. Literally you know, like, every day, at least an hour I'm going through videos and old videos too. Like what the hell? This Telegram, yeah. WhatsApp, bullcrap. We don't have that. Like we are YouTubers. We're not on Telegram. We're not on WhatsApp. Yeah. We're not selling you or trying to give you anything for free. If we give, do a giveaway <laughs> inside Discord or on our channel yeah. from us, like you'll see our face or our logos. Like you'll see a video. Okay. Like it'll be in a video. <laughs> like that's the giveaway. But yeah, we're just, please, we're not yeah. personally messaging you like ever. So it's, uh, yeah, man, it's like really, it's really frustrating. Oh, and there's that, tough. there's that tool for, YouTube that like Linus Tech Tips people have been talking about. Um, I don't know if you guys have tried it to it essentially remove spam comments for you. I haven't tried it, but I've seen it. But I'm just like I'm a little nervous because I you know I'm I'm still in my mind a small YouTuber. Like, what if this hits YouTube's API and breaks a rule and they ban my channel? Uh, yeah, and like, right. And like I have no recourse after that. If like yeah, that you got Linus nobody Tech, to reach out to. Yeah, yeah, dude. If that happens, like Linus Tech Tips, he he probably walks down the, down the road to yeah he's like hey help me out but like yep. i don't know i just get i get and people like have recommended that i use that and i'm just like i'm a little nervous because i if something bad happens i that's it i have to start over i don't have somebody to go talk to i think but. i think i would rather have i'd rather um pay some moderators a very uh, as a, to moderate the channel and delete those like yeah. i think i i think i'd probably go that route before I'd end up using the bot. I think the bot's a really good idea. And after I've watched it and looked at it and become a little e- uneasy with it, just because like it does go against uh, some terms of use, I'm like, uh, if I could pay some people to put in a few hours a month and, and, and they're just logging on and cleaning these up, awesome. You know what I mean? Like Because as we said, um, it's really funny you say that. I, I uh, went away this past week with my family and a buddy of mine was talking a lot about I forget what book it was he read, but it was talking about like how much time we waste for things that we could pay someone else to do that could do a better job. Like how many, what, what else could we do more productive? And somebody's going to know the book or whatever it is. Uh, you know, what could we do at that time? And it's like, if you, just as you had said, how many hours a week we spend deleting, like I, I report all of those that does nothing. Like, yeah. I am sorry. Like that does nothing. I have reported thousands and thousands and thousands of users with the same comments and they continue to come back. So that means it does nothing. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I've really thought about paying some moderators to do it. Like, hey, I give you access to moderate and this is what you, you know, an hour, give me an hour a day to clean up stuff, you know? You know right. It's funny too. I think it's on, uh, it might be on desktop. I don't know about on mobile, but it's actually faster to just remove the comment than if you mm-hmm. marked it as spam, because then you have to select a reason of spam. And they don't matter. They don't no. matter. Yeah. I always just put porn. I started doing yeah. child I started doing child abuse because I thought yeah, yeah. that it would I thought that like, wow, somebody would look at it. No, it does nothing. No, it doesn't get it, it does not. I, I've literally tried every one of them. And it does nothing every time. So I just do the most ridiculous one now. And uh it's, yeah, I don't know. I'm like Man, but literally my hidden users on the channel list oh, yeah. is like a mile long because I, yeah, I sit there for long. hours after my videos and I see most of the comments like the video I dropped that day will come through on my phone as like anyone commented and I usually catch them right away and I ban them. Um, so I don't know. That's it. It's just 
I try yeah. to catch them all, but you can't. You can't. It's just phys as, it's physically impossible. As frustrated as you guys might be <laughs> seeing all of them, we are a thousand yeah. times more frustrated seeing right. them too. So right. So we apologize to all of you guys. Um, just be safe and double, triple check. Make sure it's actually us. If you're speaking to us, um, again, we're probably not going to be reaching out to you first. That's how it goes. Um, I had um, I had somebody I reached out to who you know I reach out to people that use like that boost your discord channel and stuff like that like nitro and stuff and i've reached out to them in the past and thanked them so i did this the other day and someone's like someone literally responded to me like is this the real hobbyist miner <laughs> like i'm not because they were already like 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 you know what i mean like concerned yeah. <laughs> that someone was reaching out to them um and i was like yeah check check my role in the discord you'll see it and i just wanted to say thank you but it was really funny, just as you had said, like people are already pre-programmed now starting to think like, okay, too good to be true. It's just like the messages you get where it's like, hey, there's 20 Bitcoin waiting for you that you won. Go ahead and go here and check it out. It's like, <laughs> yeah, no, you one's know, sending you, no one's sending you Bitcoin. Get out of here. You know, it's funny. Somebody that actually pointed out that somebody made a fake account in Discord of me. Uh, yeah. messaged me and said it and i was like oh my god thank you so much like i banned the guy right away and then i was like hey send me your address i'll send you some risers and then i was like maybe i shouldn't ask you for your address that's kind of weird <laughs> <laughs> now that you just told me someone tried to scam you i'm like oh my god but anyways i'm like yeah i talked to him for a bit but uh i'll really send you the risers i promise they're coming this week but anyways <laughs> i think that's uh i think that's gonna do it you guys have anything yeah. else to uh add to this or are we good i am good my friend all right, cool. So yeah, guys, hopefully you uh, enjoyed the content. This is wrapping up episode nine. I think on episode 10, we're going to be doing a live stream. Is that what we're special, thinking? Yeah, special live stream edition. Stay tuned. All right, cool. So yeah, stay tuned. Most likely it's going to be on Mr. Red Fox's uh, channel. So we will, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see you guys there. But as always, please stay safe and we'll see you guys real soon. Have a good day. Peace. Peace.